we're all doing well and today we're going to be playing some NES games I've kind of got my setup on the other side of the room for this one you can see the NES is plugged in right there and we've got micro machines running so let me switch you over to the main screen and if I spin myself around hopefully Side of the room with my new microphone. Fingers crossed, everything's alright. You can see me okay. And the reason I wanted to start with um, micro machines is because even if the code master's going to use this weird, um, I don't really know what you call it, like adapter. So you basically put the console, put the cartridge in the console. I can't really show you, but I'll, I'll try and show you later. It might be a little bit slower than what you're used to. I wasn't paying attention already, I'm off to a slow start. I'm pretty impressed so far, the scaling is pretty smooth. I think the controls feel nice and responsive. How's it all looking tight? I haven't had a proper chance to test it all just yet. Even 
though, technically. The power max doesn't make a proper 4x3 anyway. So, even though I'm playing it on the CRT, it does look a little bit squashed from my perspective. And damn it, I fell off on the same bit again. I still fell off. Damn, that corner's really tricky. No, I've been overtaken! This is the one of the team right away! Yay, first place. Perspectives on retro gaming and homebrew. Oh, thank you. That was my friend Callum who made that. It's always really nice to know that I'm someone's favourite channel. That's made by people. Anyway, how is it going? Thanks for letting me know because I haven't been able to. I turn it down to about that? Is that better? I can't look at the screen because it's behind me, but hopefully that sounds okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, thanks for letting me know, else I would have been talking and no one can hear me properly. So, who are we going to go against next? Let's pick. And why not? What's that crazy animation? Right, now we have monster trucks. Okay, beat the clock. Okay, I'm ready. Is this a single player one? It looks really nice for a NES game. I'm, I don't know where I'm meant to go there. Am I supposed to be trying to get through it like that? Ah! I'm stuck.
Okay, this is just like a, um, a platforming challenge almost. That's really cool. I don't remember any of these challenges in this NES game. Maybe I just didn't get very far. Can I cheat and go around this way? Come on, you'd think a monster truck would be able to get over a little bush like that. Come on, let me through! Ah, oh, damn it. No bonus. Okay, that wasn't like a proper level, it was just a little bonus thing. Does that mean I get it? Or right, Sandy Straits, now we're on some sand buggy things. Oh yeah, going, going back to that tweet that I was just tagged in, they were saying that they like my retrospective, so I'm going to do a lot more retrospectives next year. I've got some really big plans, and I've started uh, like writing down proper ideas for it. I'm really excited to, uh, to get started properly scripting them, because they're going to be really good, and it has been a long time since I did a proper retrospective. So yeah, really looking forward to doing them. The plan eventually is to do one for each major console, like um, a history, the development, it's like defining games and stuff, but we'll see how it goes. I've got big plans, but it's going to take a long time to actually work through all that. But that's my main goal next year, is to do that. And as well as some of the goals which I'll share towards the end of the year, in a blog post or something. But yeah, next year, I think, is probably the year I've been most excited about doing YouTube out of, I don't know how many years I've been doing that now, 16? Something crazy like that. So, it must be a good sign that I'm still excited to be doing it after that long. I think I'm doing pretty well. Ah, oh, damn it, just as I said that. Is there a re retry button? No. Really? Finished in last? No, I've been doing so well up until now. Okay, I lost a life. I don't really think I've played this much Micro Machines before, because I didn't know there was lives in it either. That's interesting. Okay. We may as well keep going until we've run out of lives, and I'll move on to the next game. I've got quite a few to get through today. Hey Alex, how are you doing? I'm playing all, all the games that I picked up at the Birmingham Gaming Market tonight. Oh yeah, I forgot I was going to send you one of the um, converters for the Mega Drive. I'll do that after this stream. I'll find you a good, cheapish one. Oh, how did I not fall into the water then? I'm doing a lot better this time. Man, it feels weird playing on a CRT in 50 hertz. The flickers make my eyes go funny. I forgot that was something we had to deal with before flat screens. Slow mode? What does slow mode mean? I haven't done that intentionally, if that's a Twitch thing. Um, there's something called shield mode, which come on by default. Maybe I can turn that off? Let's try that. Did that make any difference? Okay, that fixed it. Yeah, I don't know why it was just some new setting that Twitch turned on automatically by the looks of it. I don't think I need to worry about spam with three viewers. So feel free to spam the chat all you want. Uh, 
finished second. Did you do your resi stream yesterday? How did that go? God damn it, do I need to turn the slow mode back on? Hey, we're back on the uh, on the table with the cereal again. Let's see if we can make out what everything's meant to be. One of the first projects I did at uni, uh, college actually, when I was first learning to do 3D models, was to recreate a Micro Machines track. So I used my desk at home and put loads of like game cartridges and stuff all over the desk and then scanned them in and turned them into 3D models and made a little 3D animation of a car like this going over the table. But instead of Cheerios being on the side, it was like Game Boy Advance games and stuff. And at the end he drove over a DS and the lid opened and it flipped him over onto the next table. So I thought that was pretty cool. Ah, I can't read what that is. Let's see. Uh, spam. As soon as I turned off slow mode, I got spam. How do I get rid of it? Dogehype.com. Sounds legit. Well, the only options I've got are click to reply or pin this message. Ah, uh, never mind, it'll go. Maybe Twitch sent that to uh, try and get me to turn back on their spam filter thing. Where's all the other racers gone? This car's really easy to steer compared to all the other ones. I'll see whether I can find that old college project after I've finished streaming tonight and put it on Twitter. I bet it looks absolutely awful. It was like one of the first things I'd ever done in terms of 3D modeling. I remember enjoying it though, like I'd even modeled the DS and taken photos to use as the textures and things. But yeah, it probably looks awful. I was never really that good at 3D modeling. I was always more into the design and programming side of things. Right, how do I turn that on? Report and bam. Let's see. Spam, scam, and bots. And there's two reports in that user submit report. Uh, no, they're getting away from me. And block. Okay. So it let me block and report them, but it didn't let me delete their message. Great. Oh well. Okay, cool. We got the pool table one. I wasn't sure whether this would actually be on the nest or not. I don't know whether the nest would be able to do that. But hey, it looks pretty good actually. I'm impressed with how smooth it is too. It's really not that much different to the SNES version. be just going around the edge. I think I've missed the track. I probably should have gone back on. Where am I going? Is this the track? Have I gone round it backwards? Okay, that was the right way. It's going to spit me out somewhere else. Whee! If we can catch up to anyone. 
there's someone. I wonder if this has got the other mode as well, where you have to try and get them to go off the screen in order to get points. I used to really enjoy that mode on the SNES. Ha! Ah, I used them to get around the corner. The game's still louder. Oh, someone said that earlier, but they said it was fixed. Right, I'll turn it right down. Let's see, is that better? It might be picking it up from the TV as well. Because I haven't got any headphones on tonight. But let me know how that sounds. Uh, and hi, hi, Gion. How are you tonight? Thanks for joining. Much better. Okay, good. To be honest, apart from the few sound issues, this is the first time that everything's gone right without me having to turn OBS on and off a million times. So, considering there's like five different cables involved in getting this NES to, to work on the screen that I'm playing it on and to record on the computer and stuff at the same time, that's pretty impressive, so I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy everything's managed to work out okay. And I am recording footage, although I don't know whether I'm actually going to use this footage or not in, in the video. Because I'm going to mix the pickups and the tour of the event into one thing. Rather than splitting it out into two like I used to. Uh, hey, I'm only in second. Let's see whether I can catch up. Oh, I think maybe my microphone's a bit quieter as well because I turned the game, the game down earlier. Oh, number one's finished already. Wow. Everyone else was really far behind then. Very Commodore sounding music at the end there. Joel is out. No, goodbye Joel. Let's play against Cherry now then. Oh my god, there's loads, there's loads of races. Maybe we'll do one more. We'll move on to another game, because I've got quite a lot I want to get through tonight. But I am very happy to say that this is actually a really fun game. And it actually is a lot smoother than I thought it would be. Considering I grew up playing the SNES and Mega Drive versions. I thought this one would be really basic in comparison, but it's honestly not a whole lot different. Which I'm really impressed with. Like, Codemasters must have been really good at... They must have been masters of code, should we say that? Yeah, they did a great job with it. And I'll show you what the cartridge looks like in a minute, because it's really interesting. And it, it took me a while to figure out how to actually get it in the system as well. I'll show you in a second. Alex, you know what it, what it looks like. It's that weird, like, dual connector Codemasters game. One of them ones. But, uh, yeah, it took me a few tries to get it to actually switch on, so I'm glad it did, and I'm glad it's not um, glitching or anything, either. Because it was when I tried it earlier, but I've cleaned all the contacts, and now it seems okay. I can see him just off the top of the screen. I don't know what the green bits do, they don't seem to do anything. I thought I was able to hit the cars from behind using them spikes and knock them out. But... Okay, it works on me, but it doesn't work against... Oh my god, everyone's overtook me! No, what is this, Mario Kart? I think it makes you slippery for like a second when that sound effect plays. Uh, come on. That could have been my chance then. See, I'm hitting him and it didn't do anything. Maybe it's best to stay on the line rather than next to it so you miss the white bubbles. So they're the things that really slow you down in this one. No! Ah, oh, it got him as well though. Mostly dodged that one. Oh yeah, if you steer when you're going through the green splodge, it does make you um, a bit more slippery than normal. Damn it. 
forgot it was going to stay on the end. Yay, I did it, first place. Right, that is enough of micro machines. And let's see what we can play next. Oh yeah, I'll pop it round to the other camera so you can see what it actually looks like. Right. Put that on. Full screen cam. And I should have the chat on the screen still as well, which I never used to be able to do. So here's why it's so weird. So that's micro machines for the NES. And on the other side, it says plug through game. So what you have to do, and there's no like instructions to tell you which way around to do this. So what you need to do, you need to get a normal NES game, put that on the bottom of it like that. And then this bit here balances on the top of the NES, so it's kind of tilted like an angle like that. It's so weird, but it works. But it, it was like, basically Codemasters didn't have a license from Nintendo to be able to use official cartridges. Yeah, so I'm glad it works. And I've got two other ones as well. So The, the guy on the stall kind of talked me into buying all of them. So we also got... Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy, which is obviously a very famous Codemasters game. And I'm not really sure what the other one is. Super Sports Challenge. So it looks just like a, a few different sports games in one. But yeah, I didn't really want these two. He just talked me into it, so I felt bad saying no in the end. So maybe we can try them later. Anyway, back to the other camera. And... I'm still not used to how to angle the microphone yet. Let's try that. Let's go to... Let's play Gradius next. I know this one's a classic. Um... Wow, it worked second time. Oh yeah, I've also got something else that I want to try out. Uh, which is this, if you can see it on there, this controller that I picked up as well. It's kind of got like a 3DS style circle pad. <laughs> which might be quite nice for Gradius actually, because it's like, it's a game that you want to move in all directions, so it might be nicer to use a circle pad. And it's got turbo fire buttons too, but let's just try it using the normal controller for a second. Uh, did you help me find it, or did you just remember that you'd read that name somewhere? I mean, thank you. So, the first thing you always want to do on Gradius is give yourself at least three speed-ups. So basically the way it works is... You take out a row of enemies and then you can pick up one of these power-ups. Um, and then that moves the bar at the bottom. And then you can press B to select it, so I just selected the laser power up there. And now if I press it, I'll get the missile. And it's a really unforgiving game, because it's uh, basically if you die, you lose all of your power ups. And then it basically makes it impossible to get anywhere. So you have to like, power yourself up and then be extremely careful so that you don't accidentally lose everything straight away. And it's one of those old school games where you can't touch the floor or the ceiling either because that also kills you instantly. Just like everything else in the game. Options good, that one gives you two ships. So one of my favourite things to do is try and fill out all the options first. And again, the NES version of this seems really good. I'm more used to playing this NES one. And Parodius as well. Which is like Gradius but with really fun different characters across different Konami games. But yeah, this game's an absolute classic. And I got Salamander Life Force as well. Ah, I didn't even see that bullet there. But damn it. 
yeah, so you can see I've lost all my power-ups now. That's how unforgiving the game is. It might be worth trying this with the turbo fire, actually. Because it doesn't have turbo fire built in. Which obviously makes it slower to fire. And will give me thumb, thumb cramp after a while. Oh yeah, I forgot that as well. You can't stay on the side of the screen too long either. Because you don't know whether enemies are going to come out the side and hit you from behind. Are we getting towards the first boss? Oh no. I don't know where is safe to stay. I seem to be okay though. Ah! Oh really? That's just unfair. I don't think I saw anywhere safe. Oh, I missed all the power ups there as well. I'm gonna at least get past the first level. That's my goal. Whoa, that was close. Oh yeah, I think this game's optimised as well because it feels normal. It doesn't feel slow like like quite a lot of UK games for the NES do. Uh, I think it's tricking me there where the screen moves forward. I'm going to switch it off and swap controllers and see whether that actually helps or not. And see whether this is actually working properly because it's got an analogue stick but I don't know whether you can see on this camera. If you press it like to the side it just stays there there's like there's no spring to it at all so I don't know whether that's intentional or not but we'll see it's got a really long cable compared to the original controller like massive but the reason I bought all these NES games as well is because uh, I want to do a video about the history of the NES and the development of it and stuff Let's see if this works. Emperix, good evening to you. Uh, okay, that control was really weird. It does work, but you have to be quite forceful with the directions. It's not very smooth. It's kind of difficult to explain. Okay, the turbo fire works well. But the... Um, the directions are a bit unresponsive. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of how this feels. You can probably see that the ship's kind of stopping every so often. Yeah, that's a shame. Maybe I'll try opening it up and see if there's something inside that I can, like, tighten or something to get it to work a bit smoother. Or maybe that's just how it is, but I'm having to press really hard on there to be able to move. Um, or maybe it's because I'm not entirely on the same line as the D-pad would be, so it's not counting it as a direction. But yeah, unfortunately I think I'm going to have to swap back to the regular controller. But it's still cool to have though. Although I don't seem to be doing too badly. It'd be nice if it was like a 3DS where it gave you the option of either using the circle pad or a, a D-pad. Maybe that would make it a bit better. But yeah, I'm really struggling to move using this. weird. It almost feels like the game's controlling itself sometimes because of the weird erratic movements it's doing. Okay, maybe I'm just using it wrong. Maybe if I press down and then, and then move. I'm going really slow. Ah, 
How have you got this far in life being a retro gamer and you don't own a NES? You need to change that. Go on eBay right now. I guess the Famicom counts. As long as you're playing games that don't need um, a language. Couldn't care less for it. NES has got loads of great games. Maybe you just haven't discovered them yet. Am I going to be able to survive? Somehow I am, I don't know. I must have found a good spot. Wow, I did it! Oh my god, maybe this controller isn't so bad. I guess the NES was more popular in America than the UK, but... I still don't think it should be overlooked, though. Especially for people who like Nintendo games, like, obviously a lot of first-party games got their start on the NES. So it's always interesting to go back and see how things have changed over time. Not always for the better, either. Am I actually doing any damage to this? Apparently yes, just really slow. I think I'm getting the hang of this controller, so you can... If you lightly tap it, you move the circle around, but if you hold it down, then you move in the direction that the circle's facing, if that makes sense. Like, it's a kind of weird concept to get your head around, but it doesn't feel too bad, actually. Especially for games like this that have eight, eight movement options. Try and get an option. Ah, oh, damn it. Now I'm back to square one. You have the NES Mini. I can't remember if there was any interesting games on the NES Mini, or if they're all just first party games. Do you like the Master System more than the NES? Or don't you really care for that one either? I'm a bit scared going through these tight corners with this weird controller. There you go, game over. I'm gonna swap back to the other controller now. Gradius. It's got a really cool, really cool artwork on there. Uh, what else do we have? Let's try Konami's other shooter for the system. This is Life Force. I'm going to swap over back to this controller as well. I think we're plugged in. You've got a lot more love for the Master System. What are some of your favourite games for the Master System then? I've I've never really looked into Master System as much as I have for the NES. So it'd be interesting to know what's good for it. Outside of the obvious picks like Sonic or Master of Darkness. Obviously Fantasy Star is one that I want to get for the Master System at some point. Huh. The first thing I noticed about this game is the fact it doesn't tell you what the power-ups are. Although they seem a bit more powerful. Ah, that's scary. Am I going to get stuck? 
What the hell? That's not fair, I can't do anything. What sort of level design is that? If you hold back there, you just get blocked out from going anywhere in the stage. Oh god, I don't like that. Sonic 2, Hang On, and New Zealand Story. They're good games. I never really understood what to do in New Zealand Story, though. I don't really think I gave it much of a chance back in the day, though. There's not much going on in this level. Probably don't even need to shoot anything. I just realised they actually um, reversed the controls as well, so B is fire on this one and A is select the power up, which is the opposite of Gradius. Not sure which one came first. I think this one does. Whoa! I don't like this level forming out of nowhere. Although I do like the fact that you can blast through the environment. That's pretty neat. And you can kind of use it as a shield as well. It's a bit scary that it forms back behind you as well. I don't want to get trapped in there. Okay, are we going to get a boss fight? This is quite a long stage. We're free! I'm out the other side. And it kind of has auto fire. Lightly. Is there a boss there? Come on, show yourself. Weird Giga Geiger esque monster. No, it's just a brain. Okay. A really weird, jerky brain on the black background. With hands. Damn, I haven't got any good weapons. I can't attack it from behind or anything. Is this doing any damage to it? I don't know. It's really strange. Usually they'd be like aliens or something. I wasn't expecting just a brain. Oh, it looks pretty cool though. Like the fact that it takes up most of the screen and it's moving around. Because why not? Yeah, I think one of the ideas behind Salamander was that they used all like biological stuff. Oh cool, I didn't expect there to be a vertical scrolling stage. No way. Hey, maybe I actually like this more than Gradius. I just wish it said what the power-ups were at the bottom, but I guess you would eventually figure out what they were. No way, I was not expecting this to turn vertical. That's really cool. Oh, I got a new weapon as well. Oh, I'm going to miss the power-up for that one. So, in these old Konami shooters, you only get the power-up if you take out every enemy in a wave, like that, and then the, the enemy at the end gives you the power-up. That is something I can destroy. Wow, it's actually a really competently made vertical shooter. I'm genuinely impressed. That's really cool. You've got it on the virtual console. Oh, I've never played it before. I've only ever read about it. Hence my surprise. 
I wonder if it will alternate between uh, horizontal and vertical. Whoa, that's not fair. Oh, you've got the PC Engine version. I'm guessing that one's a bit better in terms of graphics and speed and stuff. And slow down, or lack of it. I'm scared of going past those volcanoes. Slowdown actually helped me out there, though. Yeah, I want to get the Gradius games for the PC Engine. Apparently they're some of the best parts. I would love to do... I should do more videos on the PC Engine as well. I've got loads of games for it, and it's a really interesting console, but I've never really spoke about it before. So, that might be something to do next year. Although, not a lot of people really know anything about the PC Engine, so it's kind of difficult to get views on it. But I shouldn't just think about everything in terms of views. And some people might like finding new stuff out too. It's definitely the best retro console for shooters, without a doubt. And I was really lucky to get some of the rare ones while I was in Japan, before they got crazy expensive. There's things like Superstar Soldier, like several hundred pounds now, which is insane. You went hardcore on PCE before the Wii Shopping Channel. Yeah, the the Wii Shop was the main reason that a lot of people even found out about the PC Engine to begin with. And it, that's how I found out about the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics, because it never came out in the UK. Officially, it never came out in the UK anyway. There was a weird mail order version you could buy. But yeah, I found out about it through the Wii Virtual Console and um, Bomberman and Bonk's Adventure, or whatever the first Bonk game is. They were the two games that I got for it to start with. And I really enjoyed it. I was like, wow, why have, why have we never... Why do people not talk about the system more? <laughs> Don't say I've put the prices up. Someone actually... Oh, game over? Yeah. Someone was accusing me of putting the prices up on one of my pickups videos. Right, next game. I'm not going to go through that again. Not now, but yeah, really impressed with Life Force. Actually impressed with all the games I've played so far. Life Force, Gradius, and Micro Machines, but I don't know where I put it. Oh, there. I'm just making a pile of the ones that I've recorded and the ones I haven't. So, where to next? Let's try Mac Rider. I did play this one on the GBA, but... I'm not getting any signal. Nope, it's not liking this one. I'll give it a few more tries. I was clever and I did actually um, bring a cleaning kit as well, so let's give that a go, see whether that helps. Because I got told off for blowing the cartridges on my last stream, so I'm going to do this properly this time. And if you're wondering what a good thing to use is, it's, I don't think you'll be able to see on this, it's called Deoxit, and use that with a Q-tip on the pins like that. And yeah, you can't see, but a load of gunk came off it. So hopefully that helped.
Yeah, we have signal. The joys of playing NES games. It took me ages to get micro machines working earlier. Right, anyway, what options do we have here? We've got fighting course, endurance race, solo course, and design. So, let's start with the first one, fighting course. Clever, they set the year so far in the future that everyone who played the game when it came out is going to be dead by then. So, they don't fall into that issue of setting games in, like, the year 2010 or something. Oh no, I thought it disabled adverts, but it says there's an advert starting soon. Ah, I wasn't looking. Okay, let's try again. Um, okay, yeah, so the I've kind of played this game before, like I said, on the GBA, but it's been a long time. So you've got your gears at the top, you can go up to fourth, and obviously you've got this gun. So it's kind of like Hang On meets a shooting game, I guess. That does mean there's no break though, so I'm not really sure how you're meant to break. No, in 2010 the world was taken over by Dr. Wily's evil robots. Obviously. Don't you remember? Ah, oh, man, I'm not doing very well on this. And yeah, the way the track is, like, jolting around as you turn in the corners, that's not very smooth. Yeah. There's definitely no Rad Racer. That's probably the best. The end. Wow, okay, I have no idea what just happened. At all there. Let's try again. There's a reason no one talks about Mac Rider anymore. <laughs> Apart from the music, you might recognise the music. They use the music in Smash, so that's where well, you might have heard that. I'm not really sure what the point is though, am I meant to be killing everyone, or just trying to get to the end of the track? He didn't even touch me. Imagine paying 60 quid for this. Uh, no, I think I paid a fiver for this one. So I'm not too bothered about losing a fiver. It's not an expensive game. Why do I keep stopping? What's going on? Is there a time limit I don't know about? Let's try one of the other options, endurance course. Go 20km within time 250. Okay. Easy. Easy. I don't get what the difference is apart from this one's got distance instead of just a energy bar. Why do I just instantly explode when something touches me? What? Well, okay, apparently I can touch it from the side. Just not from behind. Oh my 
god, the scrolling is so horrible. It's making my eyes go funny. Oh, I've done something right. There was like a victory sound then. Have I hit the target? But nothing happened. I just need to use my gun more. Okay, I'm not moving now. I think I've run out of time. Yay, I qualified! Woohoo! Next up we have the exciting game, Golf. So stick around. If you've got nothing better to do with your evening than watch me play Ness Golf. Whoa, we got a different colour palette this time. Exciting stuff. In the future, where everything is bright green and the trees are purple. This is exactly what the year 2100 is going to look like. And everyone's going to see in like five frames a second. I can't play this anymore. That was painful. I don't think this one's going to be much better. There we go. This game has the genius title, Golf. Before there was more than one game of a sport. And, wow, it goes straight into the game. No, no warning. So there is actually something interesting about this game. Um, they actually used... So I don't know what, what club I need to use. They actually used some of the designs for the golf courses in this game on Wii Sports Golf. And I have no idea how hard I'm supposed to be hitting the ball or anything. Uh, harder than that. No, it's selected it for me. I need to use a... I don't know, 3W. No, nope, it's not doing anything. One, maybe one stronger. No, nope, didn't do anything. I'm guessing W is wedge. Four. I've played golf with friends, if that counts. <laughs> one I, is that a wedge? No, nope, that didn't do anything. Don't we use for wood? What do you need to use wood for then? What? What's wedge? P W? Nine I. S W subwoofer. Uh, no, I've, I have no idea about golf. I'm going to restart. I know what I'm doing now. I don't know what I'm doing. Which one do I need to start with? I'm guessing four is more powerful than three. Let's try that. Uh, I'm going to restart. Straight in the bunker. 
free. I didn't know you knew about golf. Uh, no, that didn't do anything either. Use it again, maybe? Maybe not so powerful. Uh, hello? Am I getting people joining or am I just getting a weird spam thing? Oh, I did get a raid, it just didn't show up properly. Hello. Uh, how's the stream? Um, it was good until I played Mac Rider, and that game was awful, so... I've swiftly moved on, and now I'm trying to figure out how to play golf. Although I'm not doing too well. Because I don't know what you need to use. Yeah, I did it. I'm good, thanks. I was quite excited to play through some NES games. We played Micro Machines earlier, which I was interested to play because it's that weird um, Codemasters cart. I was always curious to see. <laughs> I don't know why you expected me to know how to play golf. Yeah, Micro Machines is awesome. Bunker, what do I need to use to get out of the bunker? I genuinely have no idea whatsoever. Which one's a wedge? One of these ones? No, that's wood, isn't it? What's the difference between wood and wedge? PW, power wedge. What's SW? Super wedge. Uh, let's try that one then. Oh, wow! It actually went in! No way! Okay, SW if it goes in the bunker then. And the regular W ones to get started, I'm guessing... Is it the higher number goes further? Or the lower number? Let's try an in-between one. Oh, that's a good shot. That's a good shot. On the green? Yes! Okay, we can do it. Got to follow the arrows as well. Right. So, I don't know whether, like, the end of that cursor is the maximum power or not, so I'll probably go a bit less. No, too fast. Not bad, at least I'm kind of getting the hang of it. Is that going to go too far? I'm going to do about half that. Hey, I'm getting the hang of it. You were putting downhill, yeah. So now I'm going uphill, so I need to go slightly to the left of it, maybe. Let's try that. Whoa, far too fast. Although it's really basic, it feels quite good. I'm quite enjoying this. I think once you figure out how much power you need to use, 
It could be quite fun. I'm not sure what happens if you hit it further than the white line. Oh wow, that didn't work. No! So if you hit it too far to the side, it sort of puts spin on it. Yeah, that was a pretty smooth one. What game was everyone watching before you came over here? Uh, who sent you over, let's say. Weaver66, what were you playing before? Did you have a good stream? Right, I know what I need to do now. SW. With, I'm guessing, just a tiny little tap like that. Oh. A bit more. Whoa, now it went way too far. Is it on there? Yay. Kitaria Fables. Is that the game that's kind of like um, Mario... Paper Mario? I think I've seen it before. Uh, damn it. I'll do one more hole and then we'll move on to the next game. I've got three more that I want to play tonight. So we can either play the original Pac-Man, we can play Yoshi's Island, or Punch-Out. It's kind of like Animal Crossing slash Stardew Valley. A nice relaxing game then. I have no idea how much power I need to use. I thought thought three would go a bit closer. Is that further away then? That's still going too far. No, it still went too far. I have no idea what I'm doing still. Five iron. Is that for closer ones? Iron. Probably no good in there though. Whoa, that makes it go really high, okay. Uh okay. Let's use this one, I know what this one does. Oh my god, I'm going to run out of turns on this one. I don't know what PW is actually. What's That's what I was thinking of. Okay, I can stop embarrassing myself now playing golf. Oh my god. You'll have to take me to play golf sometime, Alex. Uh, what should we try next? I know how to play Pac-Man. Whoa, it booted up first time as well. Although it's a bit slow because of the PAL system. But it's a really good arcade conversion for the NES actually. The colours are a bit off though. Everything seems a little bit darker. Or maybe that's just the cables I'm using. Ah! 
Go away. Wow, that was easy. I don't know whether this is actually easier than the arcade game. Or if it's just a bit easier because it's a bit slower. I never really thought Pac-Man was that exciting though, as a game. Especially not the first one, because it's always the same maze over and over again. It's just that the ghosts start moving a bit faster. I don't know, what do you guys think of Pac-Man? Do you like it or not? Like, I appreciate the design of it, and obviously it was a very influential game. But it's just a bit, a bit slow to play. Ah, I was looking at the chat. Yeah, I don't know whether that's an excuse or not though, because there's a lot of other arcade games from the 70s that are more fun in my opinion. I think Pac-Man's overhyped. Hey, he ate the fruit. That's not fair. The world's first cutscene. Impressive. Oh my god, I'm not looking. Apparently there's a good version of Galaxian for the NES. I might want to try and track that down at some point. Although I think maybe that was early 80s. I'm not sure. Anyway, this version of Pac-Man's a million times better than the Atari one, anyway. Whoa! Can I get eat all of them? Whoa, look at me go! 1,600 bonus points. Ah, oh, it disappeared just before I could get there. Right, one more maze, and then we can move on to maybe punch out, although I'm no good at punch out. Although I played the arcade version, and that was really fun, but it's quite different to the NES one. It's got a really cool, like, 3D perspective on the arcade game, with a wireframe model, which looks really cool. But obviously they couldn't do that on the NES. Uh, leave me alone. There is a way of predicting how they're going to react, I think. Each one's programmed differently. One of the first things I had to learn in game programming was how all the different ghosts are programmed separately, all to have their own individual AI. I can't remember what does what though, but it's like one of them follows you directly, one of them always takes a specific path through the maze, one of them like goes back on itself and then comes back again. One of them tries to follow a different one, but takes a different route. There was something slightly different about each of them that makes them all unique. Which is really interesting, because from just playing the game casually, you wouldn't know that at all. Anyway, let's move on to the next game. There's not really much to say about Pac-Man. Let's try... yeah, let's try Punch-Out. <clears throat> Uh, 
a classic Nintendo game, but maybe it's only good for people that grew up with it, because I've never really enjoyed the NES one that much. But let's see. Maybe it's just because I'm bad at it and I don't know any of the uh, combos or any of the timings or anything. I've seen some incredibly impressive things that people do with this game, though. Like, people can play it all the way through blindfolded. It's really impressive. <clears throat> Is he not going to attack me? Okay, that's what you need to do. I like the over-the-top animation when he gets punched. Oh no, have I run out of energy? Uh. There's actually a surprising amount of depth in, in the controls. And the fact that you need to keep looking at how they're reacting. Count faster, Mario! I don't know what that meant then. Am I supposed to attack after he's finished hitting me, maybe? Any punch out fans in the chat? You're probably wincing at how badly I'm playing it. Do I have time to take a nap before the fight? No. That's cheating. Hmm, maybe alternating is a bit better. Okay, cool. You can just block as well. Maybe that's easier. Aha! He fell over again. Okay, we both hit each other at the same time then. Yes, come on! I still don't know what that light light bulb thing is. Yay, I did it. Let's do one more round, then we can try out Yoshi's Cookie. And maybe some of those other Codemasters games, although I wasn't really excited to get either of them. And I really don't like the Dizzy games, I don't know where the appeal is with them games. And the other one's just a sports collection, so I'm not really interested in trying that, to be honest. Doesn't seem like much has changed between the characters. Apparently they all have their own individual like move sets and things, but maybe he attacks a bit more frequently. Oh, that's good, I got a load of hits in then. Hey, you got back down. No, do it again. Alright, one more try.
Is there any downside to blocking like that? Come on, we gotta get him this time. I don't know whether mashing the buttons helps, but I'll do it anyway. Ah. Only three. Okay, time's up. Does that mean that I win because I did more damage? Or is it just half time thing? Give him a fast uppercut when he's stunned. I'll teach you a lesson, you will fall down. Wow. Inspirational. I wonder if the turbo fire buttons would help. Maybe not, because it's more to do with, like, timings. Welcome back. Yeah, we're playing Punch-Out now. I'm not very good at it, but I'm I'm not doing too badly, I don't think. I don't have the rhythm like some gamers do. I know some people are just crazy good at Punch-Out. They know exactly when to dodge and block and what sort of moves to do when. I'm just making it all up. I seem to be getting loads of hits into his face when he stands up. Like that. I really like the controls actually, they did a great job making it feel like you're actually in control of what's going on. Because there's a lot of these like boxing or fighting games and it doesn't really feel like it's that responsive. So to play an old game like this where it really does feel like everything you do you can tell is making a big difference, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the arcade version is really interesting. I played it in Play Expo Blackpool. I don't know whether you saw that video or not, but it's really cool because it's got a two screen CRT setup, which is just really interesting on its own. And the like 3D wireframe graphics obviously look a lot nicer than the NES. I don't know whether it's got like all the same characters and fights as it, or is it different? It's the only time I can attack this guy when he's punch me. Hey, I've got the timing down on this. Keep going! What's he doing? Oh my god! Stop! Yeah, I think there was something wrong with the controls on the machine in Blackpool. It didn't really feel like it was responding properly. Yes, I've gone down. How long for, though? Two seconds. No! Do I get a chance to get back up? Wow, I wasn't even down for one second. Stop taunting me. I don't know how to dodge that. You ended up playing a karate game instead. Was that any good? A lot of the arcade machines there were either broken or they just didn't work properly or weren't even switched on, which was quite annoying. Like, I wanted to play Space Harrier, I think, and it, it worked, but none of the hydraulics worked, which was really disappointing because that's like the cool thing about that cabinet. But then there was some where the buttons weren't working properly or the joysticks weren't responding correctly. You'd think they would have tested it all beforehand. Yeah, the bit with the tent in the middle. Maybe they were working overtime trying to repair everything.
It's a bit weird, though. You think they would have tested everything before they let people in and get rid of the ones that weren't working at all. Yeah, Crazy Taxi wasn't either. I wanted to play that. And there was a Star Wars one on the other side as well that I wanted to play that wasn't switched on. I don't know why they left them there if they weren't even switched on. And I got annoyed about some of the consoles being set up wrong. Having like the wrong cables or the wrong resolution or... Sometimes they hadn't even got like the frame rate set right and stuff which was really weird. I don't know whether they just rushed getting everything set up. Maybe they should get people to volunteer to get the setup right before the show opens. Yay, I did it! I managed to get to the end of the boss. Now let's try Yoshi's Cookie, which is a really interesting game. So this is a really late release for the NES. This actually came out a few years after the SNES was already released. And for some reason, Nintendo put quite a few like puzzle games like this on the NES towards the end of its life. Because there was this, there was Mario and Yoshi, there was Wario's Woods, um, Tetris 2. There was a few other ones that were kind of like multi-platform ones. But I've always kind of enjoyed this game. Yoshi's puppy. Yoshi's cookie, not puppy. Ah, I got that wrong. Mm. I can't quite remember how to... Okay, so you just have to match up a whole row and then that row disappears. The interesting thing about this game, though, I was I was about to say, um, the reason this game's so interesting is the fact that the person who designed the original Tetris game actually designed the puzzle stages for this, and that's why it said licensed by BPS on the title screen because that's Bulletproof soft Software who bought the license to Tetris. So it's a really interesting story, and it's a pretty unique game as well. But not the most exciting puzzle game ever, and definitely not on the same level as Tetris. But it's an interesting curiosity, at least. <sighs> oh, I'm so tired already. I might call it a night after this one. I'm not too interested in either of the Codemasters games. I'll probably just play them quickly off stream for the video. Yeah, Blue Planet software. Have you seen that they're doing a Netflix movie? Oh, not Netflix, I think it's Apple TV. They're doing a movie documentary thing about the history of Tetris, which will be really interesting. Because um, it does have a really interesting story, just the development of Tetris in general. And all the different countries and companies and everything that came together to make it happen. It's a very interesting story, so hopefully they do it justice. I'm very curious to see how it turns out. Yeah, I was going to say, Gaming Historian's done a really good video on it. I'm sure it'll be good. It looks like it's got a big budget. So, I'm not really sure what most of this game actually has to do with Yoshi. I saw his face there. I think he just counts as any random um, cookie, basically. You can line him up with anything. Yeah, there's a few really good resources 
for the Tetris story anyway though, there's there's a good book as well that I read a while ago called I think it was just called just called Tetris Effect. Not related to the game, obviously. No, I turned adverts off. Why are they still coming? I'm not sure if there's any other game modes or anything, let's see. I think there's a puzzle mode as well. Is there a puzzle mode or is it just different rounds? Let's see, what happens if we start on round 10? Let's try that music. It's a bit more upbeat. Maybe that'll wake me up a bit because I'm falling a bit asleep here. After I finish this, I'm going to go make myself a strong coffee, I think. And then start editing Friday's video. Okay, this is more interesting. At least we got a board full of different, uh, different things here. This is a better example of what you need to do in the game. It's kind of like Chuzzle, if you ever played that game by Popcat. Yay, hey, you're back. Hopefully the advert wasn't too painful. I've been trying to switch it off on Twitch, but they keep forcing them to come back on. And they're saying I can't deactivate the adverts because there's an automatic one that's about to run, which is really annoying. Let's see if the Yoshi head is actually... Uh... Does the Yoshi head just count as anything? Yeah. It's like a wild card thing. This is a lot more fun now I'm playing the game on a higher difficulty. Maybe the puzzle mode is just on the SNES version. Because there is a mode where the screen's already full of blocks. And you have to come up with the right combination to clear them all out in one go. Oh, it's going a bit fast now. But yeah, apart from the very loose connection to Yoshi, which was obviously just a reason for the game to sell, it's actually a pretty fun puzzle game. Pretty unique. Maybe it should have been called Mario's Cookie. Ah, uh, I think I'm dead. Oh no, I can do it. Almost dead. But yeah, it's definitely not a patch on Tetris. It doesn't have that, like, one more go factor. Get Yoshi on the nest, yeah. They couldn't actually program Yoshi into a Mario game, so let's just put his sprite on there somewhere. Just to say that Yoshi's on the nest. He was meant to be in Mario 1, I think. No! Hey, no, it's the Game Boy version. Well, I guess we may as well try these now, although I'm not super excited about it, but... Let's try the other two Codemasters games, as I've only been streaming for an hour and a half and I've only got these two left. Ooh, it didn't quite work properly. Wait for the screen to show up there. 
Well, maybe it did. I thought there was something wrong with the display. Oh, yeah, there is. That's weird. All right. Let's try that again. There we go. That fixed it. Just give it a little wiggle. Yeah, that game made me hungry. Too many cookies. No such thing. I've actually got a cookie downstairs, so I might go and eat that after this. Right. The dizzy games I get so confused with. They're so convoluted. Um, in terms of like all the different items it asks you to pick up to progress anywhere. Home sweet home. You're in your very own treehouse hut. Carrying nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm already stuck. We can try playing it for a little bit. I I had it on the Mega Drive and I really hated it as a kid because I couldn't figure out what it was meant to do. Well, maybe I was just a dumb kid. Let's see if my adult brain can make sense of it. I'm impressed with the graphics and the music. Wow. Codemasters were really good with, um, with the mess, it looks like. They've definitely got that uh, Commodore style sound going on. Ow! Instant death. Okay, it only comes down whenever I try and move, so... Or maybe I'm just not meant to go that way yet. Yeah, I guess for them, they'd already been making games for lesser-powered hardware to begin with. So the NES was kind of a step up for them at the time. Um, can I talk to him? I've got a plank of wood, a key for a ground elevator, and a key for Denzel's elevator. It doesn't look like I can interact with this guy at all. Or the ladder, even though there's a ladder there, I can't do anything. Okay, we've got some chicken. And a plank of wood. I think I dropped a key, hopefully I don't need that. Oh, okay. Calm down. The rhino just came and killed me out of nowhere. And I can't jump over it, okay. Okay, I guess I'm just not meant to go that way. I get it, I get it, I'm trying to turn around. Let's try going a different way. Is that the elevator? That didn't do anything, this is where I just came from. Yeah, I'm really not a fan of the dizzy games, I much prefer straightforward platformers. Any idea where I'm meant to go? I can't go this way because that plant tries to me. Going this way, if I can.
No, game over. I didn't manage to get anywhere. See if we can get a bit further now I know what, what I'm meant to be doing. go that way because that's where that T-Rex thing is that comes by. Although I think there's a key over there that I missed. Let's see whether it, yeah there's a key right there. I'm not sure why he stops and like hits his lips like that every so often. Can I go this way? Okay, I can't go that way because there's a pit. I can't go the other way because there's that dinosaur that wants to kill me. I don't know what the difference is between... Maybe I can put that plank of wood down? Although it just seems to go back onto the floor and not be interactable. Do I give the plank of wood to the guy though? Maybe? Take my stuff. Do you want the plank of wood? No. I have no idea what I'm meant to be doing. Any idea, guys? What's that? Tasty looking chicken. Do I need to give the chicken to the... to the dinosaur? Is there a way of cycling through things? Okay. Oh, that works. Okay, you have to give him the chicken. Cool. We're making progress. Oh. Okay, you can't walk that way. Whoops. Last life, okay. Okay, that's that's weird. That's like a weird perspective shift that tricked me. All right, game over. Shall we try the sports games? It's the last game I've got here. We may as well give it a go. So this stream started off well. The first few games were really fun, but it's kind of... As I was going on, I think I picked all the good games to begin with because the last few haven't been great. Let's see how these ones are. Why not? So we've got Baseball Pros, BMX Simulator, Soccer Simulator, or Pro Tennis. Let's begin with Baseball. Bear in mind that Codemasters are a really good programmer, so maybe these will actually be fun. We'll see. Because I have been impressed with their output, even though the games may not be for me. There's no denying that they are a really good developer for the time. Uh, okay. Apparently I hit it really badly. I got caught out. Do I need to run? Or is that automatic? Looks like running's automatic. Uh... I thought that had glitched then. Apparently that's what's meant to happen. That was a bit worrying. I don't know why I'm missing now, because I'm definitely hitting it at the right time. Is it to do with where I'm standing? Maybe? Apparently I got caught out. 
Maybe this is just how baseball games are. The only baseball game I've ever played is the one that came with Wii Sports. I don't know if there's anything you can do as a catcher. Maybe throw it at different speeds or something. Oh, okay, you need to actually go and pick the ball up as well. And then, what do I need to do with it? Yeah, not even Nintendo could get me to care about baseball. I know there's all those Mario baseball games, but no, I have no interest. Okay. Let's look for that one. Let's see what other sports are in here. No, why did it go straight back to baseball? Why is it going to baseball? That's weird. For some reason, whenever you press reset, it goes straight back to the game you were already on. Maybe these were four individual games for the NES that they made, and then um, maybe this just pieced them all together. Uh... Oh my god! <laughs> okay. That does not control how I was expecting it to. So you tap A, I guess, to pedal. And you can very slowly turn to the left or the right, and then you flip over the handlebars whenever you touch something. I don't think the B button does anything. Uh, I can't get it to do anything anyway. Right, very simple game. And going over that jump actually does nothing at all. I thought at least it would make him move up or down slightly. No. Uh, okay, let's try race two. We've got a different course layout. Let's see whether I can get around this one in one piece. Okay, that's kind of interesting. So those banks help you to steer slightly. Uh, I don't know where I'm meant to go after that. I think it's making the steering a bit better, maybe? Hmm, do you remember if this was released as a separate game, or was it always as part of this set with the other with the other sports games on? It, it kind of reminds me of that... Oh, I'm stuck on the other side of the ramp now, look. Right, let's try the next one. Soccer simulation. Oh no, I'm not going to last long playing this one. Wow, that is zoomed in. Wow. I've never understood football games. You always keep changing who you're playing as. Ah, uh, okay. I thought they might be, like, based on computer ports or something. B to pass, A to shoot. Let's go! Okay, they just let me pick the ball back up. Alright, that's enough of that one. Last one, Pro Tennis. Then I'm going to call it a night, because these are kind of painful, if I'm completely honest. Well, okay, that's a really weird squished court.
What am I doing wrong? I haven't managed to get a single shot in there. What's going on? Do I need to f hit it later? Don't. Don't? What am I doing? What's going on? I can't do anything. Let's see if they can serve better. At least we can try and play this. Okay, yeah, this isn't great. Right, I think I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it there. Let's spin round and go back to this screen. If it hasn't died on me. Are we still live? There we are. So, thank you for joining me for a look at these NES games that I picked up from the Birmingham Gaming Market recently. I'll be doing a full video about them soon, but thanks so much for sticking with me while I played through some of them. Kind of a mixed bag. Some good games, some bad. Definitely the highlights for me were these two, Gradius and Life Force. I've wanted to get those for the NES for a long time, so I'm really glad that I actually managed to get them. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I've got a video coming out on Friday, and then this one should be the Friday after. I've just got to edit um, edit the stuff that I had actually recorded at the event, which I actually did for once. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Thanks, Emfrix, for staying till the end. Really appreciate that, and I'll see you guys very soon for another stream. Hopefully I'm going to do these once a week. That is my plan. More than just NES games as well. I'm going to do some more interesting stuff too. So thanks, everyone, and have a good evening. Goodbye.